Welcome to the Zulu B. Wiley Public Library. This month is Hispanic Heritage Month from September 15th until October 15th. And we wanted to provide you all with a craft that uh, gives you a little bit of the history of not uh, just Hispanic Heritage Month, but some of the artwork uh, that you might find if you do a little historical research. Um, today, I am demonstrating kind of the uh, art of painting on bark. By now, you should have picked up one of the bags. If not, uh, we have some at the library for you to um, pick up. Uh, you can do it through curbside service or you can come in and pick one up. Um, and once you get it, you will see that uh, in the instructions, there's a little bit of history at the top of it. So I'm gonna go over that kind of uh, while we get started. But it's called Amate or Amate Painting or Painting on Bark. So let's get started. The tradition of turning bark into paper dates back to the ancient Maya and Nahua people. The Maya lived in the jungles of what is now the Yucatan Peninsula. Um, we are going to do basically what they did on a piece of brown craft paper. You have an example in your kit. Uh, there's also, when you turn over the sheet of paper, and I'll show you real quick. On the back side of the instructions are some samples that children have done um, with birds. So it's really simple, and that is also why we provided you with the color sheet of the birds as well. So they can color them, or the depending on what the child wants to do, they can draw their own. Now what I did, and I'll show you a little bit of both, is I drew my own on the brown craft paper, which we've included in the kit, just like that. And it's kind of like uh, the type that you get on rolls um, to send packages at Christmas time, that type of paper. It's thick, but it's also not so thick that you can't um, bend it. So to make it look more like bark, uh, I've just kind of wrinkled mine up and you can just simply have the kids, you know, crunch it up a little bit and then we'll just smooth it out once again. Now this is a messy craft, it's not a neat and orderly craft, so uh, let your kids just have fun with it and not to worry about how it turns out because we are more concerned about the process um, than the actual end product. So in this one, I have just made a little uh, sun and moon face and the leaves, or the, I'm sorry, the rays of the sun, um, I've just made in bright assorted colors. I made a flower on one side and um, a little bit of some vines on the other and a little bird down here. And I made a little decorative border. And, you know, the thing about bark is it's not even and orderly. So, you know, when you are um, distressing your edges, which I'll show you how to do in a moment, um, don't worry if it gets a little bit torn or if it has parts or pieces that are um, a little bit ragged, it's gonna be just fine. So I'm gonna put this over here and I'm gonna show you um, how kind of I distress the edges. Just take um, either a cotton ball with some water and just kind of, and you wanna get quite a bit. Um, and this is kind of a lengthy process, so you may have to set it aside and come back to it later. But once you get enough water on it, it's gonna loosen it up and then you'll be able to just kind of tear the edges. So I'm not going to, I'll just show you a little bit because if you rub it a little bit like that and tell the kids to rub it gently, then eventually the um, fibers are gonna start to loosen up a little bit. And that's how kind of how you distress the edges. Next, um, now we provided for you a little set of six colors of paint, a paintbrush, and um, we provided you with the color sheets uh, in case the children want to just color the birds that we have here. And what I did was I colored the birds with crayons and then you just simply cut them out. If they want to put a border like I did on mine, 
they just do a border around the edges. And then, like on this sample sheet that I did earlier, oh, this one. On this one, I just started a border over here just to give you an idea. And then they can just simply um, glue them on with any kind. It could be Elmer's glue, glue stick, whatever you have at home. And then they're just going to put them on wherever they see fit. And they can also use crayons to draw, you know, vines on the paper as well. So you can use markers. You know, once again, this is not a perfect thing. It's not a um, paint uh, neatly type of thing. Let them, you know, enjoy themselves with it. Now for the, that's if you decide to color the birds with crayons and then uh, place them on the paper. If you wanna do something like I did with this, then you're going to simply draw your design first and you can draw it with paper. That way, if they make a mistake and they wanna change it, it's very simple to do. So you draw your vines or your flowers or your sun, your birds, you know, whatever they would like to do. Draw your border. And then you simply come in with your paints and I'll just quickly draw another little bird here. Real quick, oh, it's not a very perfect bird, but like I said, <laughs> it's not about perfection. All right, so let's say that we want to make his wings and you'll notice in the pictures on the back, they've made them extremely colorful. So, you know, there's not a lot of birds in nature except for um, certain tropical birds that have this many colors in them. So just, you know, it does not have to be true to um, nature. You know, if they wanna make a, uh, combine some of their colors and make a purple bird, you know, let them make a purple bird because color is one of the things about the, um, about the project that we want really to emphasize is because when they did the painting on the bark, um, they definitely were um, uh, wanting them to stand out. And if you um, have seen a lot of uh, folk art from Mexico, color is definitely a theme in all of them. So, We've started out with some green, and if you wanna do like the dotting or the stripes and that type of thing um, that I did in my sun and moon face, uh, wait till it's completely dry, and then you can go back over with your paint, or you can use um, uh, markers or uh, paint pens if you have them at home. So we're just gonna put a little red on the bird. And it should be relatively easy for the kids um, to paint and you know, they don't have to stay in the line. The most important thing is that they're learning the history of it and they're having fun with it. And the fact that, um, you know, they did it themselves. So once again, it's not about the end product. It's about the pro process and having fun with it. So you can see how I'm just filling in that little line that I made with the crayon. And I'm not going to finish it, but I'll show you, once again, the sun face. So you kind of understand the, pro uh, the process. Um, the, after the Spanish arrived, um, many of the traditional systems that they had during that time were destroyed, uh, including the use of bark as paper. Uh, Amatol was replaced with European paper um, an ethnic group called the Otami, who live in what is now the Mexican state of Puebla. Uh, traditional bark and paper painting was maintained for centuries as part of their um, traditional ceremonies and rituals. So the history of this goes back really far in their history. It's part of um, many of the Spanish cultures there. And I think it's a really fun project to emphasize 
um, you know, the culture and the history as well as the, the artwork that they had, the bright colors um, and the energy that you see um, in these type of paintings with the, um, uh, the colors and the, the themes. You can see, you know, what they emphasized as far as beauty, you know, the flowers and the um, birds and all of that. So I hope you will enjoy this um, project. Uh, I had a great time with it. Uh, if you have any questions, give us a call here at the library. But um, we, ha we hope that you've learned something from this and that you have had a great time with it. So thank you very much and we'll see you the next time.